Happy Throwback Thursday, patrons. Dave here, and uh, we're doing things a little different with this commentary. Uh, as you can see, one, we're on camera, and two, we're we instead of just me. The voice is talking to you again. Of course, we have to talk about Artie and Artie's legacy, but we have to go back to where it all began at the offices of Glee. One of the things we set out to do on this one was specifically make a sketch where, like, even if you hadn't heard the news, we explain the backstory enough that you can follow the comedy. Like, even... It's enhanced by knowing the news and knowing all the details, and it's cathartic if you do know the news, hopefully, but even if you've never heard of Jonathan Colton, you still follow the concept of the comedy of the sketch. Well, and it's like, it, it, it's... It's still, there's a little bit of you need to be, you need to know Glee, but you don't need to know Glee, you just need to be aware of Glee. Right. If you're peripherally aware of Glee, well, then it's still, you can be like, okay, yeah, it's it's that musical show, and most of it still plays. We were kind of inspired by, like, Parks and Rec when they do a topical episode. Like, you don't have to know that Harold Camping was predicting the rapture to enjoy the episode where the reasonable lists... Uh, I actually the like end, it more the world. when I don't remember. Yeah. But I guess we should start watching this if we're gonna commentate. Geek Vision. Geek Vision logo. Love that logo. At the offices of... Actually, no, just the offices of... Pause. Please. Okay, so <laughs> on that note, if you look on IMDb, because we're on IMDb... Yeah, why is this video on IMDb? Invid, motherfuckers, invid! So, the thing about this cast is they were not cast basically until we were filming. I mean, I'm exaggerating. A little earlier. But, again, this whole process was 48 hours. Meaning, the night before, we hadn't finished the script yet. We, like, had a fight and we're like, we need to take some time, sleep, finish this in the morning. So I, but we knew we were gonna do it. So I called Matt Stoner and I was like, dude, are you free tomorrow? I know you mentioned you do some acting. He's like, well, what time? I have work. I'm like, well, early afternoon. He goes, oh, I work at like four, so. Yeah, I could do that. I'm like, great. He goes, can you give me a ride to work? I'm like, yes, I can. That is a thing I can do. I have a car. And at that point, it's like almost 11 at night. And I was like, okay, tomorrow I'm going to call Dan Gajewski. And I have a couple people I can call and be like, hey, are you free today? It's Saturday. Would you like to come over and film a video with me? The, the thing is... In Connecticut, we were not quite so close to, like, we were not surrounded by friends who like doing creative things and are ready at a moment's notice, so we were cutting it really close with this. And most of my friends had just graduated college, like, pretty recently beforehand, and were either, try, you know, trying to find jobs and not having the money to drive anywhere on a moment's notice, or had just found jobs and didn't want to lose them and couldn't take days off. And mo most of my friends were already spread all throughout the country. <laughs> so I had a couple college friends like Dan who I was like, if they're free, they'll probably do it because they like acting and it'll just be fun. So I called up Dan and I was like, hey. Again, morning of. Yeah, morning of. Sorry, I should cl clarify. It's like 9 a.m. I'm like, what you doing today? He's like, I don't know why. I'm like, well, if you're free, I was wondering if you wanted to come down to my house and film a parody video with me. And he was like, yeah, that sounds like fun, okay. And I, I, I secretly, I was really hoping Dan could do it because I knew he'd be great as Jones. Oh, we didn't give, go by and name the character. So, yes. okay, from left to right, Matt, we have- Matt Stoner playing the part of... I guess right to left makes more sense. Right to left, obviously we have Artie, as uh, I'm playing Artie. In the middle, we have Dan Gajewski playing Jones. And on the left, we have Matt Stoner playing TB player. Yes. Yes, that, that is how he's referred to in the credits, because he is the only character who is not named in the video. Uh, and once we realized we got through the whole thing without naming him, we were like, well, we have to call him TB Player in the credits. Uh, that is a reference to one of our favorite movies, and uh, it's the only reference in this whole thing that nobody's picked up on yet. At least insofar as they've relayed to us. Nobody's left comments saying they've noticed it, uh, because I think people just aren't reading the credits. Jones is the only character who, if you read the script, his character is named Jones. Actually, let me check the script over here. Um, the, uh, the thing about, like, in the original script, the four names um, were Whiskey, Pretzel, Temp, yes. and Jones. Yes. I, you can guess who Whiskey was. Yes. 
Um, because and, you knew you wanted to use that flask. Yes, I wanted to use the flask. Uh, not even specifically that one, but I knew I wanted to use one of the several flasks we had. <laughs> um, uh, and uh, so TB Player was originally called Pretzel, either because we thought he'd be eating pretzels or a pretzel. I think we thought he'd have a bag of pretzels, or I just thought, fuck it, his name's Pretzel. <laughs> No, I think the bag of pretzels, because, like, we always visualized him as this sort of, like, nonchalant, like, mm -hmm. yeah, I know what's going on, but I don't care, like, yeah, sort of. That's, yeah, that's kind of, that was the vibe, and, hence the beanie and the glasses and stuff. It, yeah, and, and I was originally a temp. Uh, I was just called temp, because... Before you walked in in that jacket and had all manner of fucking authority. Yeah, that's the word that comes to mind. Authority! Um, so the point I'm really getting at is that uh, our cast was very quickly assembled with very little notice... And they showed up to our house and were just game for anything. Yeah, even to the point of, like, it wasn't just like, they were like, yeah, sure, we'll go along with it. Like, they were pitching jokes. Like, we're going to point out some jokes later that were like, yeah, that was all them. Yes. So they they, they really owned it. So thank you, Dan Gajewski. Thank you so much for being bored and being amazing. Yes. Thank you, Matt Stoner. Thank you so much for needing a ride and being amazing. <laughs> also, thank you, Dan, for having a suit. Oh it, yeah, that's the, he's the only one who brought his own suit. Because it really sold the, uh, like, in over his head. Like, I'm trying to do my best to impress the bosses, but... Because the rest of the suits were in our costume bin. Yes. That we were all just like, I don't know, you try this one, you try this one. It's also, it doesn't come across on camera just how 80s the whole arty getup looks. Yeah, because my hair was, like, done back. Like, we kept slicking it back. And the glasses are actually not my actual glasses. They're, like, bigger... Yeah. And like it, it I, I forgot to unbutton the shirt. If you you can see in the image, my shirt's buttoned, but my tie's undone. But but also ju just that specific suit you wore, and you you've worn some different suits as already over the years. Mm. But anyway, it uh, it was once basically that morning. Once we assembled the arty look, I was like, oh, this is perfect. And I think it was in that mo moment we knew deep down that this character would come back, even if we w wouldn't say it just yet. But our big fear was that we'd bring him back too soon and kill it. Yeah, which we probably could have brought him back sooner than we did. Oh my god, this line. This is the line that we fought for an hour over. They have one of those yes. versus we have one of those. I believe, if I recall correctly, I pitched it as we have one of those. And I pitched it as they have one of those. And uh, like I was thinking, it, it, it is sort of like this, wait... I, I have this vague notion that such a concept is possible, but but we actually have one at our disposal. And I was saying, no, 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 the joke is, I've been saying they should make something like this for years. And oh my god, it exists? How did I miss that? And we fought for an hour. Like, we wasted, and again, this is like, you the know. The night before we're filming the thing, and we, and out of the Less than 40, like the whole process from the point where we decided to write it to the point where we put it online is probably less than 36 hours. Of those 36, we wasted a full hour on this line. And this is not even like half a page into the script. Here's the other thing. The one person who quoted it in the YouTube page quoted it the other way. Yes. Thus demonstrating that as much as it really mattered... It didn't really matter. Because both were funny for different reasons. Yes. I did later go back on what I said and go, oh no, I think we is funnier. And have then since swung back to, no, 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 they is right. And any given day, I might have a different opinion on that. I've, it, it, I've stopped caring. Like, I I acknowledge that they're both funny notions. Um, I eventually just rescinded because I didn't want to waste any more time fighting over it. Yeah. But... We, uh, the, the funny thing is when we tell that story to other writers and other video makers and other creative types, they think it's hilarious that we wasted an hour arguing over that, but they understand the significance at the time of, it's like, these no, are fundamentally no. two different jokes. Yeah, it's, it's an important distinction. I fully believe that Artie somehow saw bits of Princess Bride and thought it was a documentary. Sure. And thought, sure. like, or no, he's Christopher talking about really, someone else. <laughs> Christopher Getsch has just killed some random Spanish dude's father. Unless they came out in the 80s. Sure. If they came out in the 80s, then... And that was uh, one that it, Dan the original and Matt line, The original line is identical to how it is. Like, in the script, that was the line. But it was just reiterating. It wasn't actually a second joke. 
Mm -hmm. It was, you know, yeah, if it came out in the 80s, it's worth ripping off. It, it, it was literally just like... It was basically another transition line. It was a transition line. It was a padding line. And when going through our mugs, I forget whether it was Dan or Matt, but one of them found the Beatles mug and went, could he please lift the Beatles mug up? <laughs> when Actually, no, you know what it was? It was actually when we were doing the read-through at the house. Because yeah. it was, uh, he, they just grabbed the mugs and one of them was like, oh, a Beatles mug, I'm using this one. And then when he read the line, he just did, he was like, oh yeah, if it's in the 80s, he's like, dude, can I please hold up the mug? And we were like, um, of course, that's, that's so much better than not doing that. And it's... One of the biggest, like, positive feedbacks we've gotten. Yeah, that, that's the thing that the most people comment on. Like, the individual element that most people comment on is probably that, the, like, the Beatles mug when he says 80s, which I don't know... Like well, like at at the time we were like, it's, oh, is this like this might be a subtle thing? Not many people might notice this, but yeah. I, I mean, not that we thought like, oh, we're so clever with yeah, this. Yeah, it wasn't like oh, this will be a background thing. We were like, yeah, this isn't as on the nose as most yeah. of our jokes. Like, it, so. it, it's not a big laugh moment. It's a it's a quiet visual thing, but mm -hmm. it ended up being the part. So then, as I was uh, driving cross country to move out here, uh, I stopped at a Kmart with. Ryan Hip to hang out for a while, and I saw in their CD section, like, I swear I did not put this there, one of the slots was music from the 80s, and somebody had actually left a uh, copy of Sgt. Pepper there, <laughs> and it made me smile so much. Artie was the breakout star of that, Yeah. Um, and we briefly toyed with the idea of immediately doing an executive's web series. We didn't oh, even, we had no material. We didn't even toy with the idea. We just thought we, this would this would be a way to capitalize uh, on it. But we we knew we couldn't live up to this first one right as, away. As Edward G. Robinson said it, the first thing that struck me was that web series angle. Only I tossed it in the waste paper basket three seconds later. Double that, indemnity. Sorry. That, that's um, exactly what Edward G. Robinson said about web series. Um, uh, but it's because it, we were like, that would be the quick, easy way, except the writing would need to be good mm -hmm. and we couldn't think of material because what made this so good was the fact that we had source material we had people we were specifically poking fun at i mean not like individual humans but we had like a group of people we were specifically poking fun at there was a context to it and none of that would have been present in a web series like it would just be setting up straw men to knock down you know it wouldn't be like mm -hmm. it wouldn't have well, the same us on the side of justice thing well and this also like we are still creating straw men here, uh, which I don't usually like doing in comedy writing. I, I like I tend to prefer empathize, like finding some spark of empathy in all the characters. But in this case, it was just so much fun. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is one of those cases where the process was really what drove the product because mm -hmm. the process was so much fun that it's like the products kept he, happening. Because anytime someone's like- Even when we got mad at each other. Right, but like anytime someone was like, hey, could we do an Artie ca cameo? I'm like, oh my God, yes. I will play that character till I die because mm -hmm. he's just too much goddamn fun. We are about to get into some of those cameos, but basically we we didn't immediately capitalize on it because we knew we couldn't do it justice. And uh, we do intend on using Artie more frequently now, uh, but we can't just use Artie for the sake of using Artie. We can never just, yep. Well, you know what it is? The reason a web series wouldn't have worked, and I don't know if we were able to quite articulate this, but we were able to hit on this, and that's why we then in the web series idea, is the joke of Artie is you start with the question, how the fuck did this happen? Mm -hmm. And the answer is always Artie. In every instance that we've used Artie, there's been some how did this happen question mm. that the answer was Artie! Yes. Artie's how it happened! So we're about to get into the uh, the first of those. The first of those Damn which is what? the twister bit in the Blitztrava, in the Blitztravaganza. This was the first uh, piece for a theme park video that I was thinking of long after and retroactively adding in. Which it's good we did because it opened the floodgates for, uh, for the Knickerbocker rant. Oh my god. But this this uh, cameo wrote the rules for an Artie cameo well, in a lot of ways. It certainly opened the floodgates, and 
And it, yeah, it laid down, first off, this is when we really del delved into how insane can already get. Right, because it, 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 I mean, there were takes where I had the cell phone upside down. Which, which we realized was the wrong kind of insane. Well, you realized, I took your word for it, and then later was like, oh no, he's right, that's the wrong kind of insane. Be because the problem with it, like... That means I'm not actually talking to anyone. Right. The, the important thing is Artie is still communicating with someone and making decisions. My but, statements have ramifications. Yeah. There are effects to my words. Whereas if you're holding the cell phone upside down, you just think you're having a conversation with the voices And it head. doesn't answer the question, how did this come to be? The ways in which this, I think, had an influence on the later Artie was one, this was where we realized, oh, Artie's really about improv. Mm -hmm. Even if it doesn't make it in the final cut, which in this one, it, most of it did, Artie is the character who can just fucking say anything. Artie's very stream of conscious. Well, he can say almost anything. That's true. We'll get to that. Uh, the um, the other thing is because it's the one take, which Garrett's uh, cameo did not do the one take thing, but Tony's did. It mm -hmm. was the same exact format as this, where it's Artie on the phone in a single take, talking to someone deciding the fate of a theme park slash movie yes and ends with sawing up a script so we shot this uh at the off at an office that i cleaned yeah Let lizzie interned there for a while and yeah then cleaned there and then I, I was hired to just clean the office on weekends which meant i had it it, it was a um, access but not permission <laughs> yes but they would have been fine with it uh -huh. <laughs> we actually shot this we shot this back in connecticut <laughs> Uh, didn't get the footage to Garrett until after we had moved out here, at which point we said, uh, if you're not satisfied, we can just... Do it again. Yeah, you can film it with us. Um, but the reason being, we shot for hours. Like, maybe three, two and a half? There's like an hour and 40 minutes of raw footage, and that's just a footage. Yeah, and, and I just wanted to cut it down to just the potentially usable takes before I send it to Garrett. Just like, look, I'm not going to make... our very favorite outtakes. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to make you sift through this. Um, we do still need to cut an outtake reel for that. Yeah, I, 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 I need you. Yeah, I need to get on that. Cut down an outtake reel. Um, but, uh... This... Try and snizzle! Yes, that will make sense someday. Um, you can also just see how much weight I gained since last time I wore that blue shirt in the... Uh... In the first sketch. Yeah. But I'm sitting next to file folders, and, like, I guess if I'm really supposed to be sitting across from your desk, this is a really confined space. I just figured you were really far away, like, at the end of, like, one of those giant dinner tables in a murder mystery. So, the Viewmaster... Oh, yeah. And this unicorn picture on the we're side... Just there. Those were just on that desk. Like, the person who uses that desk uh, brought those... <laughs> Um, the, uh, the rubber ducky, yeah. the clapperboard, the, um, Native American instrument thing, what is it, uh, piccolo, whatever that- The ocarina dealio. Ocarina, yeah. The cell phone, which we gotta find. We, yeah. we have a bag of prop cell phones somewhere that we cannot find to save our Prop ancient lives. cell phones. Uh, the flask is the same flask. Uh, my wisdom teeth. Those are my actual wisdom teeth <laughs> on the table. Um... Which I'm pretty sure I still have those somewhere. I want to make them into cufflinks one day, but yeah. haven't had that chance yet. Uh, script, which also I'm sure was one of my scripts that we just yes. threw the title page uh, on. Your pill bottle, your kazoo, two of our beanie babies. A scorpion and an elephant. Yes. I found the most weirdest of the beanie babies I could. The uh, elephant just stood up well, so I'm like, sure, an elephant. All of those are just books that you had in our house. Yeah, a Complete Idiot's Guide to Making Money on Wall Street, Day Trading for Dummies, and How to Avoid Falling in Love with a Jerk. I thought that was an appropriate yeah. <laughs> combination of books for Artie to own. And then we brought the saw and yeah, the, put it back there. The saw in the background. Um, um, but uh, then everything else on the back table is just stuff that was there. Yeah. You also... Case dismissed! So, uh, originally, that was a gavel. We couldn't find a gavel. And there were further lines where... I say, why do you have a gavel? And you say, say, why are you still here? Why are you still here? There were further lines in the mm -hmm. script. Now, Garrett cut those because he realized it's not necessary for the pacing of the video. But and presumably, if it's not a gavel, well, I mean, I guess a hammer doesn't make much sense either. Well, we, we shot several takes uh, where I said, why do you have a gavel? Somewhere I said, why do you have a hammer? Just in case, mm -hmm. like, just, just to give him, only, yeah. Yeah, just to give him every option. But on top of us not having a gavel, which like a week after we filmed this, you found a toy gavel at Target. It's true. So this was added after most of this review was shot. Like this was written after most of this review was shot. Yeah. Uh, and it was like the last day of shooting for 
uh, the first part of the review. Right. It, this, this was like just a week or two before the first part of the review aired. Yeah, so this was the very room we're in right now. This was uh, right over there, that table back there. Yeah, you is, what, see it. is what Nick's sitting at. Um, you actually, I think, can see on the screen the... Uh, well, the, the, the Yale poster. Yeah, we, the we, moved, we moved around some of the art to get some of it closer uh, to the table. But, like, we did a big filming day uh, here. So, like, the wall right over here in our living room is where Tony's sitting in front of when he's on the other side of uh, filming Doug. Or he's on the other side of filming The Nostalgia Critic. And if, you'll, if you'll notice, the, uh, the kazoo is peeking out from behind that complete idiot's guide to make money on Wall Street. So that book's back. Obviously, there are lots more pill bottles now. The elephant is back. And, and this was also the same day we filmed uh, Haley's green screen stuff for her Madame Leota cameo in part it's, three. It's so true. So there, were, there was a lot of filming there done that day. It, it, it was a big mansion filming day. and uh, but, but it was primarily the part one parts that needed to get done. And those are ground up Tic Tacs and Altoids on the table. Yes, yes, yes. And, uh, and as one commenter pointed out, the currency. <laughs> are those fucking ruples? Yes. Yes. Yes, they are. I don't remember exactly what Tony had when he first came to me, but he was talking about he'd love to do an Artie cameo for the Haunted Mansion. He, he's wanted to use Artie in a video for a long time, and it's really a match made in heaven. Like, the Artie insanity and the some jerk just it, insanity. They're both very frenetic characters, and it, yeah. just, it just was a great, like, combination. And uh, I don't remember what the original pitch was, but he was talking about kind of like the casting of Eddie Murphy and I, th I think his idea was oh yeah he, he, I think his idea was Artie can't tell theme park rides apart yes like that was the original premise like he's just naming the wrong rides and I was like okay that that's a good idea so but it's somewhere weren't somewhere when talking about that we came up with so as a result he's racist against theme park rides can't tell them apart or can't that was no pun intended. I apologize. That was just bad. <laughs> but uh, he can't tell them apart. And so then he, um, to prove he's not racist, decides he's going to cast a black guy in the movie. And the idea was he tries to cast like Martin Lawrence and accidentally cast Eddie Murphy because he is, yes. in fact, terribly racist. In one take, I ended by saying, we're going to cast Eddie Murphy in the role. <laughs> And dropped everything and yelled, fuck, that's the right guy. <laughs> and I realized that's the one rule of Artie, is he can't say the correct thing. We sort of modeled him after the kind of fictional, like, oh, when you make up a studio, this is the, this is the fat cat. Like, not the exact performance, but, but think like, uh, like, like Michael Lerner in uh, Barton Fink, or, or like... Yeah. Just the type of larger than life fake executive of a fake studio yeah. that you see in a lot of uh, in a lot of comedy, especially. Except we just keep assigning him to real studios. <laughs> yeah, no, that that's true. That is kind of the vibe of him. Operation. So right there, I'm thinking, say anything but Dumbo Drop. <laughs> anything but Dumbo Drop. God damn it, what words exist other than dumb? <laughs> what are some words? You notice the long pause after that statement. I See? could not think of any goddamn words other than Dumbo Drop. And here's the thing. Most of the time in life, the words Dumbo Drop don't come to mind. I can't think of a time where I'd say either the word Dumbo or the word Drop in the course of a given day. <laughs> you might but say Drop sometimes. Maybe. Maybe. But probably not as a noun. You might say Dumbo if you're like, man, the line for Dumbo's really long at Disneyland. That's surprising. Except <laughs> yeah. I don't notice those things. <laughs> like, because I don't ride Dumbo. So that that's an example of me, like, writing my way into a corner and being like, fuck, 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 fuck. Because I was trying to come up with another name other than Dumbo. I was trying to come up with some thing I could butcher it with. Well, also considering 2002 is long after Operation Dumbo Drop came out. I'm on cocaine. I don't know that. <laughs> or I'm trying to remake it. I don't know. Anyway, this is what I came up with. Fuck you up. Because when in doubt, just say fuck. So that's all of Artie's appearances thus far. I would say that's a glimpse into the way Artie works, but that's a thesaurus. In the, not <laughs> thesaurus. 
uh, encyclopedia into the way yeah. it already works. That, there was nothing glimpse-like about that. Yeah. 